We are now joined by Peggy Ashbrook. She's an early childhood science educator from Alexandria, Virginia. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about early childhood science education. We love it. So can you tell us about the popular column or the blog for NSTA called the Early Years? Sure, sure. I write the Early Years column, which appears in the Science and Children Journal. That's the pre-K and elementary school journal for the National Science Teachers Association. And it's a monthly column is geared towards early childhood educators, which means anyone who teaches young children ages two through, say, eight. Okay. And that includes uh, preschool teachers, elementary, kindergarten through grade two teachers, also family child care providers, and of course, administrators at all levels. And okay. it has an activity that is something that people can implement in their program with very little preparation. However, the column also has an introductory page where I provide a lot of resources, some background information, and a little bit of my own experience teaching these activities with young children. I, I usually work with the three and four year old ages, but I'm aware that people really need resources for two year olds as well as kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. Why do you think it is so important to engage those youngest young learners because two-year-old that's pretty young it is pretty young but you know they're exploring already yeah and they're already thinking their brains are building all we know from brain science that the neurons are building at that age and they have uh, a need for experiences they're exploring the world so that they can learn and they get those first-hand experiences I think it's even important for adults to have those first-hand experiences that really build your background knowledge. I've had middle school teachers say to me, um, you know, the kids come to us and how can we teach about the diversity of life when they've never held a cricket in their hand? And a so cricket. those are the kinds of things, you know, uh -huh. we try to um, have young children have those experiences that begin the process of science inquiry. So they, they might dig up a worm on the playground. After that, they're going to maybe look at the worm through a magnifier. They're going to um, ask questions. We might read a book. We might see what happens when we put the worm back in the earth. So you follow it up with asking children, you know, what do you think is going on? Why do you think it does that? And have them compare maybe to their own body, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. And then I write about it also in the blog, the earlier blog, which is online, and that's a free blog for everyone, if, whether or not you're a member. Okay. And it. Um, relays some additional information about the association and also about activities, experiences, the weather. We're always talking about the weather. Because of all the technology and smartphones and all that, now you're talking about digging worms and doing yeah, this. The yeah. kids are not as much outside. Do you feel now that this is so much more important to incorporate that into the classroom? Well, that's a loaded question, but ah, I think sorry. that um, I, I feel that technology it can be used in service mm -hmm. to science learning. I mean, I had to bring a, a digital camera outside, and it's really interesting to see what pictures children will take. They're almost all familiar with how phones take pictures. I don't let them use my phone. Right. I bring a digital camera, and you know what is important to them? They take a picture of the slide, and then we can talk about how their body goes down the slide, what else goes down the slide, how can you make objects move on a slope, cool. those kinds of things. Cool. And so some of my columns um, in the book are related to motion, objects in motion, but other ones are uh, simply about getting children to ask questions and mm -hmm. to think about what could happen or what could be what they're observing, what is going on. Right, and this yeah. is your way of engaging the students into the program. Yeah, I really like children, to start with children's questions, and sometimes it's just a gesture. Mm -hmm. You know, you see children smacking the water at the water table, right. and what are they trying to figure out? You know, oh, they're thinking about the properties of water. What happens to the mo when you smack the water? And how is that different than when you scoop it? Right. So it, there's a lot of physical science there, a, a lot of properties of matter, and a lot of fun, a lot of play. It's really important to engage children in play while we're learning science concepts. Well, you're obviously very passionate about you, what you write and, and, and yes. publishing your book. What do you hope that teachers will really take away from your publications? Well, two things. One is don't be afraid of science and that it's something that if you aren't knowledgeable about it, you can dip your toe into it and 
gain knowledge over time. I think that's how we all learn is, you know, not necessarily taking a master's degree in a science specialty, but right. learning from others, learning from children's books. The second thing I want teachers to take away is that it's really important to, to have fun, but also to continue the children's thinking. Don't do, um, you know, making Play-Doh one day and then observing worms the next and then, um, you know, rolling balls down a ramp the next day, but try to have some continuity in there. So mm -hmm. if you are observing worms, yeah, go ahead and make the Play-Doh, but then use the Play-Doh to make models of what worms look like. Okay. And that's called science inquiry when mm -hmm. you're pursuing a question it. over time. It might be something over months or years even that you know the next year that other the children might continue thinking about those same science concepts okay so those are the two things i love it yeah. well very passionate about what you teach and what you write about any plans yeah. for our next book well i love to write and i'm still working on the column and the blog so okay. if i do do another book um i'll let you know okay i'm sure it's <laughs> a lot of work well peggy ashbrook it's been a pleasure having you with us thank, thank you. you so much i appreciate the time